Hello everyone and welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today, in this video, I'm going to start a three-part series on solving quadratic equations. Um, and this first part is the basic factoring methods you can use to solve quadratic equations. I'm going to go over three types in this video. Greatest common factor type factoring, which is what GCF stands for, greatest common factor. The simple diamond method used for trinomials. And the difference of squares used for uh, quadratic equations that are the form of two squares with a minus sign in between them. So let's get started. Now the first type of factoring we're going to look at is called the greatest common factor type factoring. Now the premise of this type of factoring is that you're going to divide out and separate all factors common to all terms. So that's what's meant by greatest. We get all of them out. The largest amount of factors that belong to both or all the terms involved we are going to divide those out and put them in front. Now, of course, this video assumes you have practice doing greatest common factoring with two or more terms. Okay, so let's look at this quadratic e expression real quick. Um, expression versus equation because it's not equal to anything. It's just listed by itself without an equal sign. Now, let's look here. We've got 4x squared plus 8x plus 16. Do you notice any factors that are common to all three terms? Well, let's look at the x's. Do each of the terms have a power of x? No. The last term does not. So that x, or x squared, that you see in two of the terms is not a common factor because it does not occur in all the terms. But you do notice the 4, the 8, and the 16. So what's the largest number? That is a factor of all three of these. If you break 4 up, it's 2 times 2. If you break 8 up, 4 times 2, and that 4 can break into 2 times 2. The 16 will break into 4 times 4, and each of those 4s will break into 2 times 2. Now, that's the only time I'm going to do this, because I remember I already assumed you practiced doing greatest common factoring with numbers. You can see that each of these numbers has at least two twos as its factor, as, as factors. So what we can do is we can pull out, by division, those twos. Multiplied together, you could pull out a four. And so we can take out, through division, a four, and we're separating it in front. That's how this is done. When you divide the first term by 4, you get just the x squared left. When you divide 8x by 4, you get 2x. And when you divide 16 by 4, you get 4. And so here we have this expression factored. Now, of course, if it's an equation, it's usually set equal to 0. This is the most common way we solve these. And we will use another method to continue to factor this. But we started with greatest common factor. Now let's look at the second one, which is not a trinomial with three terms. It's a binomial with two terms. As you can see, we have 15x squared plus 75x. So let's look at all the common factors. Let's look at the variables first. x squared and x. Do they share a common factor involving x's? Yes, they each have at least one x as a factor. So we could pull that out. So we know part of the greatest common factor is an x. Look at the numbers, 15 and 75. Is 75 a multiple of 15, just like 8 and 16 were multiples of 4? If so, then you can pull out 15. You can divide out 15. That would be the greatest common factor. And in fact, 75 is a multiple of 15. It's 15 times 5. So we can pull out, by division, 15x. Now we write in parentheses what's left in our two terms of our binomial. If we divide 15x squared by 15x, we just get x. If we divide 75x by 15x, what would we get? We'd get 5. Okay? So this is what we'd have. And if it was set equal to 0, we would, of course, be able to solve this. Now, remember the zero product property, which can be used right now in this example. Zero product property says 
that each factor, if the whole expression is set equal to zero, each factor can individually make it zero, and we could set each factor equal to zero. So we'll do that right now. 15x equals zero. That's the first factor. The second one is x plus 5. And you no longer need the parentheses when you write factors individually. If you solve both of these for x, you get the first one, that x is zero. And the second solution for solving this quadratic equation, if you subtract five from both sides, you will see that x equals negative five also. So we have two solutions. We will always have two solutions for quadratic equations. This is how greatest common factoring works. All right, so now we have the second method in the video, the simple diamond. This is also called the X box by some teachers, but it involves this large X shape in which we'll put numbers in. I like to call it the diamond because uh, um, that's what I was taught a long time ago and I'm a nostalgic person. These are used for a particular type of quadratic equation. In standard form, it would look like this. X squared, so the first coefficient, the leading coefficient is one, plus B, which is some coefficient, times X, plus C, some constant. These both are examples of those types of trinomials. And the premise of the simple diamond is to break up a quadratic trinomial into two binomial factors. Then if it's set equal to zero, you can use the zero product property to get the solution from each factor. So what we do first is we set up, when it's in this form, we set up our X box or our diamond. And we say, what two numbers multiply to the constant term, C, and add to the middle term coefficient, B? We put the 2 here and the 3 here in the diamond or X box. And we put the two uh, solutions, the two numbers that satisfy both of those things in the sides here. Again, the question is, what two numbers multiply to 2 and add to three. Well, this is a pretty easy one. You could probably guess two times one. Two times one. Now, we write the factors, the binomial factors like this. X squared plus three X plus two will equal, does equal X plus this fact, uh, this number right here. And this will be times another binomial factor, X plus one. So what we're doing is we're taking the two numbers that we determine multiply to two and add to three and we're making factors out of them. We are adding them to X in each factor, like so. Then the zero product property allows us to write each of these factors separately at equal to zero. X plus two equals zero, X plus one is equal to zero. And by subtracting the constant both sides, you could get from this one that X equals negative 2, negative 1. So those are your solutions to that first quadratic equation. So let's try a little bit of a harder one here. x squared plus 12x minus 45. Again, it's in this form, so we can go right to the diamond. What two numbers multiply to negative 45 and add to 12? Okay, we need to think a little bit harder about this. One of them must be negative for them to multiply together to get a negative number. They both can't be negative or they'd multiply to a positive number. So one of them's negative. So it makes this a little harder. Don't think about the 12 just yet if you have a negative for the, the, multipli the, the multiplication product. Think about that on its own. What things multiply to 45? Well, nine times five. Let's try nine times negative five. 9 times negative 5 would be negative 45, but 9 minus 5 is not 12, it's 4. And if you uh, switched it around so you use positive 5 and negative 9, those would add to something negative. So that combination will not work. The next one you will think of is probably 15 times 3. Let's try negative 3 and positive 15. 15 times negative 3 is negative 45, and 15 minus 3 is, aha, 12. We have found our two numbers. Now we will make our two factors out of them. 
x plus 15, x minus 3. You see, I, it was a minus 3 here, so it belongs as a minus 3 in the factor. And then we will set this equal to 0. Use the product property. We get x plus 15 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. Well, we're going to subtract 15 to both sides. We're going to add 3 to both sides in this other equation. The two solutions we will get when we do that are that x equals negative 15 and positive 3. All right, I have one more example for you because I want you to get really good at this, okay? So this time we have x squared minus 11x plus 28. It is in the proper form, so the simple diamond applies, assuming it can be factored, which we assumed um, in all of these so far x squared minus 11x plus 28. This time, the term that we are going to try and get the two numbers to multiply to is positive, and the term that we're going to add to is negative. Okay, now when this situation occurs, both numbers must be negative. If they add to a negative number but multiply to a positive number, we're dealing with two negative numbers. It's the only way. So let's think about 28. Uh, 14, maybe you divide it in half. 14 times 2. So that would be negative 14 times negative 2. That makes positive 28, but those don't add to 11. They add to negative 16. The next ones you might think of are 7 and 4. So let's do negative 7 and negative 4. Those multiply to negative 28, and negative 7 plus negative 4 is negative 11. Those are the two numbers. So we have x minus 7, x minus 4 equals zero, zero product property, set each one equal to zero separately, and solve for x. That will require multiplying by those two, I mean, excuse me, adding those two constants to both sides. So we'll get two positive solutions here, seven and four. So that's the simple diamond method for factoring. All right, and the last type of factoring for the video, the difference of squares factorization. So this is done when you have quadratic equations in the following form. Uh, a squared x squared minus b squared or a squared minus b squared x squared. Why all the squares? Well, with difference of squares factorization, you have to make sure that both terms in your binomial are perfect squares, which means you could put a square root around them and you get a nice answer after you simplify that, okay? That's what a perfect square is. So all of these are perfect squares. x squared, 64, 9x squared, 81, 144, and 25x squared. I could put a square root around each of those and get a nice result. Not some irrational number or expression, which is great. That is required, so you must test to make sure that they are of this form or you cannot use difference of squares. Also notice that there's a minus sign between the two terms. If there's a plus sign between the two terms, you're not using difference of squares factorization unless you want imaginary numbers. Of course, I'm assuming this is an Algebra 1 course or a math Integrated Math 1 course, so we're not looking at imaginary numbers yet. All right, let's remember the premise. So the premise of the difference of squares is to break the quadratic binomial into two linear binomials. Now, you might have, hopefully you've learned this already in your pre-algebra course or your algebra readiness course, but a squared minus b squared, a simple difference of squares where the two things could be anything as long as they're squared, you get a plus b times a minus b. It's the two factors that you see square rooted with a plus in between them and one of the factors and a minus in between them and the other factor. This is how difference of squares factorization works. So let's apply that to our first example. x squared minus 64 equals 0. I already said that I could square root both those things, and there's a minus sign in between. So immediately you could set up your two parentheses like so. In the first parenthesis, we will put the square root of x squared, x, plus the square root of 64, 8. Then we will place those two numbers again, the same spots in the second parenthesis with the minus sign in between. 
and we set that equal to zero, I think you could see what's going to happen based on the beginning of the video. In the zero product property, you would get x plus 8 equals zero, x minus 8 equals zero. Your two solutions will be x equals negative 8 and positive 8 from that setup. The next one, 9x squared minus 81. Yes, there is a possibility of a perfect square number in front of your x squared term. These again, perfect square roots. Set up our parentheses. What's the square root of 9x squared? 3x. What's the square root of 81? 9. First parenthesis, we'll place those with a plus sign in between them. The second one, we'll place those two with a minus sign in between them. Okay, if you set that equal to zero, you can see this is a little more complicated, but I did want to go over it. You'll get 3x plus 9 equals zero, and 3x minus 9 equals zero. You will still solve for x like you would in any algebra situation. We're going to subtract 9 from both sides in this equation. We're going to add 9 to both sides in the other equation. And then we will see that we have 3x equals negative 9. And we have 3x over here equals positive 9. And all that's left to do is to divide both sides by 3. And you get that x equals negative 3 and positive 3. Okay, last one. Notice how the x squared term is at the end, but that is just in this form, and we can use the difference of squares to solve it. What's the square root of 144? Some of you might be thinking of a gross and a dozen. That's 12. What's the square root of 25x squared? It's 5x. So we have 12 plus 5x, 12 minus 5x, equals zero. Now we're going to have to do what we did in the previous one, but this time we're going to get a fractional answer. That's okay. It's just, I'm just alerting you to that happening. So 12 plus 5x equals zero. 12 minus 5x equals zero. So we're going to start by subtracting 12 to both sides in both equations. We get that 5x equals negative 12. We get that negative 5x equals negative 12. Then you'll divide both sides by 5, and we see 12 fits and negative 12 fits as our two answers. This one would give us positive 12 fits because these negative signs cancel each other out. So our two answers here are x equals negative 12 fits and positive 12 fits. Okay, guys. That wraps up basic solving of quadratic equations by factoring. Next video is going to go over some different factoring techniques that are more complicated. Thanks, you guys, for watching. This is Falconator, signing out.